Got a call last night from an old friend's wife. All right, welcome to the Sounds Like Life podcast with the one and only Daryl Worley. This has been a long time coming uh, podcast that uh, we've talked about for a couple years now, and just kind of the ball started started rolling and getting into play, and uh, here we are. And so uh, this is episode one. Now, we will say, before we get too far into this, that we're doing this kind of unorthodox because we've already shot a couple episodes. <laughs> and so we're going to go back uh, and get the first one because one of the things when, when we started, Daryl started talking about this podcast was wanted to have some unique opportunities because we're going to have some special guests when he's on the road. And poof, it happened backstage at the Opry, kind of behind the scenes at the Republican National Convention. Yep. And so before we could even get everything in place, we're out on the road shooting uh, with special guests and those types of things. So we've thankfully we've got a little practice. We're kind of getting the feel <laughs> of this. Um, and then we had a little practice run is what we'll call it, a practice run. Uh, and so that's where we're going to pick up right here. So uh, good way, way to get started. Good way to get started. You ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, trying to give you guys some housekeeping rules. Uh, what you're going to see as fans is a little bit of everything. Uh, you <laughs> literally, figuratively, uh, and all the above. Uh, kind of what started this conversation was, uh, for probably four or five years now, I've heard stories from you, from from the wind varbles of the world, and and all those guys, uh, Bryce Long, that said told so many great Daryl Worley stories. <laughs> and after fact checking, we found out that most of them were true. <clears throat> and so, as you thought it can't be true, I thought it can't be true. There's no possible way he's lived through all that, but he <laughs> has. And so. Uh, we're going to go through all of that. And like we said, we've already done the Republican National Convention. How cool was that? Man, just um, uh, good to be back there, you know, for another uh, trip, time around the block, if you will. But, but uh, man, the people that we worked with were so uh, willing to help and, and let us set up and had yeah. all kinds of guests that came in. I, I just I thought that was a really – bizarre thing that just happened it just organically came together and we uh we certainly took advantage of it but yeah. but thanks to all those people that that jumped on and uh came into the room and sat down with us it was amazing yeah so you just you when you watch this show you never know uh what you're gonna see what you're gonna hear we're gonna have uh you've got your guitar sitting next to you so we never know when he's gonna pick it up and start picking something um you never know who a special guest is and when y'all are gonna sing together so we're kind of just setting that framework up so that's kind of the goal we're gonna just put it out there we'll have uh audio versions and visual versions on pretty much every platform we can convince to play <laughs> so <laughs> if you know us we're gonna get it out there so um Man, here here we go, and uh, just excited to do this. And anything you want to say to the fans before we get going? Yeah, to be perfectly honest with you, this is something that I never even dreamed I'd be doing. And it's bizarre to me that we sort of did a little um, teaser, you know, to just let people know that we were thinking about it, and we got a huge response. Sure did. And I thought, well, people just want to hear me and you sit around and talk about silly stuff, mm -hmm. I guess, or whatever, you know. Yeah. But, but, I mean – and like you said, you know, we've done a couple of, uh, I guess you could call them practice runs now, and uh, we wind up getting into some some very deep, meaningful conversations, and then we have a lot of uh, time for jokes and fun and, and, and music. And I think that I've looked back over some of this stuff, and if I, I have always been that guy that I can't stand to hear my voice on uh, recording and all that, you know, it's just one of those, I think that's pretty normal. Uh, don't like to look at myself on the TV screen, <laughs> but what I've seen and what I've heard has been pretty entertaining. <laughs> Even our little, uh, you guys put together a little promo and I yeah. just thought, man, how cool is that? So, and I, I like the idea too. And the fact that this has, it's dynamic, it's moving mm -hmm. always. It's not just here. And, yeah. You know, it's got all kinds of different elements and the fact that you guys are mobile and willing to go and, and that is a huge thing. I mean, we've, we have footage from a ton of places already, and we already. haven't even started yeah. yet. Yeah, so. I mean, that's, and that's the cool part about this. I think is, so, too. So. And, and I've said, with talking with a lot of your team, Miss Julianne and all those folks, <laughs> your, um, your stories are what make Daryl Worley the artist <laughs> that he is. I mean, that's, that's why your songs 
you know, when you're thumbing through all of your major hits, you wrote them. Most you know, of them, most of yep. them you did. And it's yep. the stories, and we're going to dive into so many of those. And um, let's do it. It's just cool. <laughs> it's cool stuff. So, talking about stories, uh, one of the things that will change, you said, always moving is the set behind us. Yeah. Uh, and, and the production team had a great idea. They said, hey, bring some stuff from Daryl, bring some of my stuff, and just kind of let's just make it a big storytelling piece that's yes. going to change and evolve. Uh, throughout, and I tell you the coolest thing on here. There's two that that have stuck out to me. Um, there's a really cool flag behind you. Can you tell me about the flag? Yeah. Uh, so uh, that got that came to me from General Dick Cody, uh, who was I think a, a three star general at the time, and uh, he he and I we were together more than one time in the different war zones, and then. Um, also at the Pentagon uh, and different places. Uh, but he put that together for me uh, because of our time spent uh, in, in, the, in the combat zone and wanted us to have something, uh, you know, just he was doing it, doing it to honor me and, and uh, for my mm. song, Have You Forgotten, for uh, the, the continuous travel into the war zone to, to entertain our troops. Um, and we talked about this just a little bit. He was, I think he was really uh, blown away by the fact that we didn't just do the USO thing, that we, we mm -hmm. traveled with a sergeant major of the Army who uh, has to go into really dangerous places because he has to go and, and get with the men and women that are, that are doing the deed, that are getting the, the, the fighting done find out what those people need to uh, sustain them and to, to, to make them be able to do the job that they're doing. And then he goes back to Washington and, and lobbies for that, gets that stuff and, and you know, says, uh, here, here are the coordinates. That's where you drop that right there. Wow. And, and, and these people will uh, put it to use. And mm. so that's who we traveled with year after year after year. And we did have an, a USO affiliate. And so we got to come <clears throat> Uh, back off of those short hops, they call them. Um, just just to give you a little uh, extended explanation of this. So when we first landed in Kandahar, Afghanistan, it was the first place I ever went to in the in the actual war zone. We we set up to do that uh, in Kuwait, and we flew the flew to Kuwait with the uh, Air Force and flew from Kuwait to Afghanistan with uh, the Air Force on a C seventeen, but. Um, the setup was pretty intense, and then we landed in in Kandahar. Actually, we we went there on a C one thirty. I remember they asked me to come into the cockpit for a combat landing, and, <laughs> and it was a uh, little different Wild. than anything I'd ever yeah. experienced. But so when we got there and we were settling in that evening, the sergeant major of the army uh, at that time it was the twelfth sergeant major of the army. It was Jack Tilly, came to me and said, "Look." Every day we go out on these short hops to go into the different places and sit and talk with, with these guys, like I said, to find out what they need. And he said, we don't have another element in this huge show kind of a, a operation that could do this, but you and your guy, and that would be Swa uh, <laughs> at the time, uh, you got those flat top guitars and he want you know he just wanted to know if we would be willing yeah. to make those journeys with him and I said absolutely so that's how all that got started uh, that's how we built the history in the war zone that we built uh, because of him then he was followed up by the uh, 13th uh, sergeant major of the army and that was Kenneth Preston who also mm. became a very close friend he was actually on some of the trips uh, prior to his becoming sergeant major of the army so, so General Cody and I have been friends for a long, long time, but he saw our commitment and our, our um, just resolve to, to continue to do whatever it was that mm. we had the opportunities to do uh, that we, we call that our part. That's yeah. our part. And, and we were very, very, uh, I mean, we just had resolve about it. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't a if or ands or but thing. It, he says, let's go do it and uh, whatever Not it is, questions, yeah. nah, we'll be there. And so every time he, he, he told me that first night, he said, if you'll go with us on these, then we would love to have you and you'll, you'll see things that no one else 
overseas and you will have opportunities to perform for, you know, tiny little groups of people. Sometimes it would be five or six, sometimes 30. Uh, unbelievable. You, you know, you can see all that on my documentary and, and we'll cut some of that stuff in as we go. But um, just just over the years has been it's very surreal. And uh, yeah. this guy back here had two sons that flew Apache helicopters. They were in the war zone. I'll tell you some stories about that as we go along. But yeah. um, that flag back there uh, was flown over the Pentagon. It means the world to me. And, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we're, we're very blessed to have pieces like that that we can talk about on our yeah. set. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, you do not come from a military family, correct? Yes, I do. You I do. Just, I just okay. didn't. I didn't you serve didn't myself. Serve. Right. But okay. Yeah, on both sides, very, very rich. I wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, as a matter of fact, on my daddy's side of the family, um, it's all army, mm -hmm. except for one guy who, who served in the navy, and on the other side of my family, on my mom's side, it's all navy. <laughs> and uh, growing up, it was really funny because we we were a family that we all loved one another we we brought our families together for a lot of different yeah. events like sometimes we'd have a big feed at my grandma's on thanksgiving and a lot of the other uh, side of the family would show just up because yeah. we're just really we were just all very close and uh to see those guys army navy thing uh, outside the war zone when they're they're going back and forth you'd think they were going to all wind up out in the yard in a, in a brawl but uh, to see that and how they carry on and then to see it, it in real time in the war zone when they when everything's operating like it's like it does they're, they're all yeah. one big yeah fighting force and well that <clears> makes <throat> a lot of sense because I know obviously you the time you spent over there but your knowledge most people just assume you served because because you love those guys I mean right. you genuinely I have seen you stop. Uh, to shake a hand or to to give that person time in the airport. Sure. A couple weeks ago, you I mean, absolutely, we were hustling and and you made sure that person got their moment. Now I really respect that because that's a big that's a big deal and and just being able to honor those guys in every way possible is guys and girls. But I mean, just uh, it's just neat, man. It's neat I think to it's see. different <clears throat> because before I had an opportunity to do any of this that we've been talking about. Uh, I was just raised that way. I, I, I get a kick out of my daughter. She's 16 years old, but she's been doing this since she was seven or eight, even before. Uh, if we're in a gas station or a restaurant or somewhere hanging out, an airport, my daughter is always, Dad, can I go? And that, someone in uniform, you know, whether it's, mm -hmm. uh, it might be a police officer, it might be a, a, a soldier, a Marine or who, whatever, fireman, you, know, you name it. And can I go... And thank them, you sure can. Uh, look them in the eye when you shake shake their hand. And so I was brought up that way, that it's a huge, you know, I, I was listening to Arlington, Trey Atkins on the way over here this morning. Really? And that's that chorus says, uh, uh, thankful to be here on this peaceful piece of property. Uh, uh, Anyway, whatever it says, but there's a line in that chorus that says, and I'm thankful for those thankful for the things I've done. Yeah. And that's... It means a lot. That's, I mean, it, it, <clears throat> it means... It means everything to them. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I grew up in a generation of heroes that never spoke of it, you know. Now, they'd get to drinking and maybe there'd be some st Story stories or that two. came out, and that was my favorite... Yeah. Thing, oh, honestly, I was just insane because I'm telling you, I, I was very, very blessed. I grew up in, in the midst of heroes and uh, those World War II guys, what they went through. Uh, it, it's it's there's something about the will of an American warrior that's different yeah. than anybody else in the world. I mean, we have I think it's because we have something so unique here in this country. And we had to fight for it. To, right. get, to get out to get from it. under the tyranny. Yeah. And I mean, they even came, they followed came us back. over here yeah. and, and we still had to fight. And, and some of those earliest patriots were, it was brutal. Yeah. But I mean, that's the beginnings of this nation. Right. And so there's something about the Americans' will to, to, to survive and to win 
and to fight it, that's different. And I, I will always say that. And I don't think that it's just me saying that. I think there's a whole bunch of other countries that Gotta know agree. that too. Right. <laughs> I tell you, got a, a bucket list experience that I didn't even know was on my bucket list. A couple weeks ago, we went down to Pensacola for a work trip, uh, made it into a little vacation, which was oh, fun. Cool. And Got to see the the Blue Angels. Oh man, man, and it and it wasn't on. I mean, I, I've heard about it. I've seen that it's great. <laughs> I know those things. But you talk about standing there on the shoreline and having your breath taken away. Oh from man, you. and then the tear that just comes down your cheek because oh. it's like I, this is America, and, and Dude, you know, at its best. Yeah, you know, I played a club down there, <clears throat> and we still go back to these little places from time to time. That's something too that we'll capture. Yeah, uh, you know. Uh, we played a place, w- was their hangout. That's cool. Uh, and it's not on base, so they're out there throwing down. Oh, I bet. And I have some video and, and photos of me hanging out with some of those guys, not the the ones that are current, but that had, had just basically, like, in the last few years, retired wow. from that and yeah. and, and are, are now doing something else. Unbelievable mm-hmm. group of people, and man, I would play those patriotic songs, and that they just you'd think yeah. the rafters are going to come down, yeah, because they they're serious about it, and uh, it's not just it's every branch of the service. It really is. There's pride, and 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 so yeah, that had to be powerful. It, I see Mike's pulling up some of the photos I posted here on Facebook <laughs> on my page, and man, it just they look like they're touching, uh, man. It's just wild, <laughs> it's crazy. man. Like I. I got to see those guys. It, yeah. I went and did a sh- uh, show, air show, in at Tyndall uh, Air Force Base. Yeah, and that's the. I got to see my brother and his uh, cronies there at uh, Arnold Engineering Base in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, it's one of the largest wind tunnels in the world there, and they they took the F twenty two Raptor and perfected mm. it, helped the the military perfect it there. They actually told the military about eleven or twelve things that that plane would do that they didn't even know it would do. One of those really? things was that it would hover, and n- not many people know that. But yeah. so I was talking to my brother on the phone while the F twenty two was doing the demo at the air show, and and my brother said we we designed that demo. Mm-hmm. He said I can walk you through every step of it as he's going to do it, and he did. It was amazing to have my brother on the phone <laughs> calling it while this guy's flying <clears throat> around right in front of me. He said, but the, the end of it will be the most impressive. He said he's going to yeah. show you that the plane will hover, and then. He said it's, it'll be loud, and 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 he said, and it's it's inefficient. It's burning up fuel like you know nobody's business. But yeah. then he said, while it's hovering there at the end of the runway, he said, be be ready because he's gonna start easing that nose toward the sky. It's and he said, when it gets straight, he said, you better put your thumbs in your ears because <laughs> it's gonna be a big old nasty noise. And man, that thing just he just hit those afterburners, and it was like a rocket took off. Yeah. So. Yeah, cool so, stuff, man. So apparently the Whirly Boys have some interesting education. Yeah. If he's doing that, and then most people, here's your Whirly trivia. <laughs> if I had to line out four or five degrees on the table and yeah. say, which one does Daryl Whirly have? Most of them would not. You know, if you want to tell us a little about your your degree path you've got there and, and just the side of, of science and chemistry and biology and all the fun stuff you play with. Well, I, I wanted to. Is it started off? I wanted to be a veterinarian. Okay, and uh, so mom and dad wanted us to have a college education if if we could, uh, if, if you know we could if we wanted to do that. They were willing to help us as much as they could. Um, you know, I I worked real hard through college, and I also you know paid for part of my education. But mom and dad were right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, all three of us boys have college degrees. Uh, I have a degree in biology and chemistry. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to. I, I decided I would doctor people instead of animals because they could tell me what was wrong with them. Yeah. And uh, and then uh, I, I, my older brother is. Um, well, I'm in mean, his background's probably electrical engineering uh, along with some other stuff. But he, for thirty something years, he's been a rocket scientist. That's what he does. He <laughs> wow. He tests. Uh, Rocket engines and jet engines from mm-hmm. from everything from uh, Boeing airliners to uh, Patriot missiles to you name it. Wow. They, they do it all, and uh, that's yeah, we're pretty proud of that. You know, he cool. he has perfected a bunch of things, and then he's like, "You make me sick. You get you get to go to the war zone and see it in action, and I never see that." But I mean, he's gotten to a point where they they do get to go out out west and to the 
deserts and plains and see some of the testing. So, mm -hmm. and then my younger brother's degrees in chemistry and bio, uh, chemistry and psychology. So, hmm. uh, <laughs> we're a weird bunch. <laughs> who, who would have ever guessed that that I'd wind up <clears throat> playing country music and sitting here doing a <laughs> podcast, podcast with yeah. Travis and Please, there you go. Hey, I've, I, I'm I'm sure proud it worked out that way. Yeah, it, it's working out. I like it. So, and then he did a little commercial fishing. Yeah, well, that's that's a. Uh, Working in the mill there, the paper mill at Counts, Tennessee, and and uh, commercial fishing and carpentry and uh, roofing and that kind of stuff is how I got through college. Yeah, but a lot of that was uh, commercial fishing money. We uh, we put the science to work on some things. Uh, we you know we just started off uh, fishing Pickwick Lake and the Tennessee River for for catfish, commercial catfishers. Mm -hmm. Uh, selling to restaurants and different markets and and then the government got involved and all that changed and uh we weren't going to be able to to make a lot of money s just selling catfish uh because they quit letting restaurants cook them right straight out of the river you know you had to you had to put them in some reservoir or holding tank and keep them for a long time and they lost their weight mm. off and it was just one of those it, it, it's it's where the government wanted to get it so they could totally control it and that's what happened so uh, we had to come up with something, and we discovered uh, paddlefish. You know, down home they call them spoonbill, but the paddlefish is a cartilaginous fish that is a filter feeder, and their eggs for caviar are over the top. I yeah. mean, ru the Russians are crazy about them, and there was an unbelievable market that hardly anybody knew about. And we we dug it up and figured out how we could do that. And so we made a bunch of money doing that. That's cool. Got me through college. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> add that. I didn't know that. So add that to the list when we write the, <laughs> Julianne, when we write the book about Daryl Worley, we're going to add that to it. Caviar, I man. Caviar. There's and a so. spoonbill up there. Some We, we caught a... Uh, we caught a female one night just below Pickwick Dam that weighed 129 pounds. Man, yeah. Well, we need to take you off the road for a little bit and have you figure out the Asian carp problem because I hear it's making it. We've been dealing uh, with it for a couple of years now. You know, we're it's gracing it. its presence down there near Pickwick. That's and right. So, um, we we'll need you to figure that out. I think I think we could figure it out. Uh, and the way to to do it is like great great example. I won't get into this too deep, but so nobody knew about how valuable the the caviar was mm -hmm. in, in the paddlefish and uh once the word started getting out you know um just me and one of my cousins was was fishing and his dad and their family they all kind of started getting into it tying nets and learning how to it's just uh it's a lot to learn but um the funny thing is is that once the rednecks started finding out about it so we had given some spoonbill or mm -hmm. paddlefish to the Russians. And they, which they're very, very, very difficult to keep in captivity. Right. Almost impossible. I mean, it's a, it's a, so tough. You to keep them alive. I'm saying to, to raise them in captivity. Yeah. Is, you can't do it. Uh, well, you can, you but can. It's, yeah. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. You can. Okay. But it is a very, I mean, it's a, it is a very specific, uh, environment it has to have certain elements that that have to be kept constant you know you if something goes down overnight you could lose a lot of fish and, and a lot of really? eggs and blah 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 so the russians were so crazy about these these this caviar that they're willing to put the research and time into it they took fish from us yeah started raising them themselves the rednecks got busy and pretty much <laughs> de depleted our I mean, they were about to go in extinct, at least, especially in the Tennessee River system and some of the other smaller river systems. We wound up having to get fish back from the Russians to restock our streams. No way. True story. Yes, sir. Huh. There's you, the difference. That's $185 for an eight ounce tin of that. The difference between the, the spoonbill, the, the paddlefish eggs, and, and a lot of other eggs, if you will, uh, that people eat as caviar yeah. is that. And the Russians love this, is that they have a crispiness and a pop yeah, to them. Yeah. And and some sturgeon eggs, if they're if they're stored for any length of time, that all goes away. Yeah. But not with these guys. And so it's neat. You you pulled that up. That's North American caviar right here in Henry County. Oh yeah. So that that's that's a company that's here that they're they're doing the commercial fishing and they've so they do that and then they have created a market for the Asian carp meat. Because um, it's a very healthy white protein, right? But it's just a pain because in that system, 
they they they've had to design these boats and do all these things to keep them because they spoil so quickly oh, yeah. and they all of those issues but those are it's uh, the neat things about made in Tennessee. Oh, absolutely. And so that's a whole industry and a whole world and that might be something <clears throat> fun we could get them to come on the show with us uh, and talk about that cuz that's neat. That'd be awesome. And 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 I'll tell you this if that was my whole point is that if you help these people, if you help them and and show them that you can create a market. Right. You won't have a problem with Asian carp because right. you'll have to re start regulating them or they'll catch them all. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. See, the problem we've got <clears throat> is the way those things multiply. Oh, yeah. And you just can't keep up with them. Well, you got to have a predator. Right. And, and there's nothing big enough. Know, it's scary. To, yeah. The thoughts of that are just, mm. that might cut back on your water skiing. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> so one of the other cool elements about this show that you'll see, you're going to have our producer hop in every once in a while. Mike Murphy is is kind of the guy behind the screen who's keeping this big screen right here running for us. And so we're thankful to have Mike as mm -hmm. part of the show. And anytime we get lost on what we're talking about, the lyrics to something or some uh, verses or whatever we need pops up on that screen. And, and it's keeps unbelievable. Us rolling. It's pretty cool. It's pretty well, cool. The tech. Last, you know, when we were doing some of the early stuff that, that we've still got footage of, I was... You know, we would, it was almost like he was reading our minds because sometimes before it came out of our mouth, it'd be on the screen. I'm like, uh oh, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we should keep. I said just now about the book of Daryl Worley. We should almost start some of the fun stories in a book form. I think people would read that. Man, there's so much. Um, I have lived very eventful life, even yeah. before any of this national stuff started, and when. When people like hear the stories, uh, nine times out of ten, I've I've come to realize that a lot of people just think that I'm a compulsive liar, and that <laughs> and, and that and that you know that and, right. they, and they just accept me for who I am. Uh, a buddy of mine, Steve Leslie, to help he and I wrote a bunch of songs together, but we had Second Wind and mm -hmm. Tennessee River Run, and um, he told me when he first met me, he said I'd never met a more, you know diverse all these stories and he said so after about a couple of weeks i just decided man it's all right he's he's got an issue with this this storytelling and lying and things but 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 who cares i just love him for who he is so i asked him to come down during the showcases uh when i got my record deal and we did them at the moose lodge in savannah and i'll never forget this was this was hilarious to me he said you know i just thought all the time that you just had a great imagination and you made up great stories and yeah. i just accepted you and he said but i came to savannah and i was you're introducing me to the band and then all these people started swarming you and me and, we, and i was listening to all the talking and the goings on and people saying yeah hey, you remember when we did this or you remember when you got shot and we had to take you you remember this that and, that? and he goes i went he said i stepped back and i got a little bit dizzy and i went oh my god it's all true. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man, we start a we at some point we we've got a couple of different publishers that I think would be interesting in and interested in maybe helping us get that stuff out there and uh there's there's a there's some kind of a book or something in it because the the good lord saw fit to let me survive mm -hmm. a lot of crazy yeah, close calls. I call them near misses. Mhm. Mm and I'm thankful that I'm here to talk about it because some of my very close friends weren't weren't that fortunate, and yeah. and so that's that's a cool place, and and we should we'll get into that'll it. be fun. And that's <laughs> one of the things that's going to help drive this thing and and make this thing interesting throughout all these episodes is the interaction. So as you guys are hearing us talk about things, throw comments in, whether it's, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or those types of things, yes. uh, throw those comments in. If you want a book, tell us if you want to, you know, Daryl should write a song about that. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe that's it. And so, you know, talk about, talk about for me for a second. Um, the name, Sounds like life with Daryl Worley, <laughs> and I think that's you've pretty much said it just now. But yeah, we we had a you know we had a completely different name, and 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 it was for for different reasons and a, and a little bit of a different direction, and and uh, that just turned out to be something that we we decided we would uh, generalize it somewhat. And so for the last thirty minutes, we've been talking about stories and all this stuff. So I, 
you know, my manager called me one night. We were we were saying, I think think we probably should change this name, and but we've got to find the. And she said, look, why in the world would you do anything other than sounds like life with Daryl Worley? Um, and just clicked. I just <laughs> as soon as she said it, I was like, that's that's the stories. That's yeah. all the stories. That's what we're here for is to share, uh, you know what we've been through and how it's connected us to all these other people. Um, I think that this is going to be really, really unique because, um, you know, they yanked me off social media years ago because uh, I, I don't share well with people who, you know, I would never get on someone's social media platform and start, ranting and raving about how stupid or how ignorant or blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, I might see it and go, okay, I'm not ever coming back here again. I've right. seen enough, but I'm not going to try to belittle them. And I, I attract those people. And so they said, hey, be better if you just let us handle that. So I feed them content and do all that mm -hmm. stuff. But this may wind up being my connection to my people out there. And I think, and, so. and I think that's, I think that's what we're seeing on the feedback. And I think, that that's really cool because we kind of have control of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I ain't taking off to Kentucky to whatever it's <laughs> to meet with the Homeland security or whatever. Yeah, that's true. Too. <laughs> it's, it's a lot safer. I love way. this. It's comfortable and cool and safe in here. Yeah. <laughs> so if it's going to be called sounds like life, obviously anybody that knows Daryl Worley knows your family's your life. Oh yeah. And so, uh, excited! We've we've had them around the last couple of, of shoots. You'll see them in some episodes um, behind the scenes of the the music video. Uh, you're gonna see some cool clips and things from that day. And I, I look forward to taking the the stuff down to Savannah and having having an episode on oh, the farm wow. and meet the family. And Absolutely. So, uh, of course, Kimberly plays a large large part in your life, and then Miss Savannah's growing and becoming a woman and all that wild stuff and. Yeah. Man, is it ever wild? Leaving out this morning, I was I, I left there thinking there's there's I mean, there's never gonna be a time when there's not something to do on that farm. It mm -hmm. it is just overwhelming for the most part. But uh but with your family, I think you you feel a similar responsibility and Savannah's getting to that age where she's going through a lot of different things and I come away from there sometimes just feeling emotionally totally wiped out. Yeah. Because I tell you, man, parenting and especially when they get older and it gets more complicated, it's a, it's an intense mm. job. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not. It truly is not. And uh, we probably should have some specialists on here sometime <laughs> to sit and talk with us. And, we uh, need the help because I'm watching you. You know, <laughs> Savannah's 16, uh, Ollie is nine, and Millie is is five. And so I've got a few years till I hit that age. But oh, yeah. I, it's, but I'm watching because I know it's coming. Yeah, it's it staring is. staring down the barrel. So. And, and, and uh, I did the same thing. I have several friends that started having children when they should have, yeah. <laughs> unlike myself. And... And believe me, I call on them. I, I mean, I, you know, this thing with Savannah has been just up and down, man. We we were always like this, and I'm sure you yeah you know what oh, I'm yeah. talking about. And boy, just all of a sudden, it's like okay, she's grown. Whose kid is yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's all good. It, it she loves her daddy. I know yeah, that. Yeah, and she I does. love her. I, I, I let me tell you, funny. I went okay. in this morning, and I was just gonna. She was turned toward the other wall in her bed and uh they don't always sleep there at the farmhouse but she's got a big bedroom over there and, and two different beds she can sleep in she's sleeping in this her bed that's got this big foam pad and so i say goodbye to her mom and i slip around to the other bedroom and i, I ease in there she wakes up like her daddy uh oh she does and this is not the first time but <laughs> i leaned over her body yeah she's she's kind of in the fetal position pointed the other way i leaned over her body mm. and i leaned in to kiss her on the cheek to just say goodbye baby mm -mm. i thought well, she may not even wake up and she sensed my presence and she came unglued and she hit me in the jaw and my <laughs> teeth clicked i thought i broke a tooth i got a big huge hole in my tongue where i bit no, my uh. oh yeah i told i called my wife when i got to almost to like uh 
the interstate. Mm -hmm. And I said, tell Savannah I love her when she wakes up and tell her that I wasn't mad, that I was just uh, getting out of there <laughs> before I dripped blood on the covers because my tongue was just... I, I I, just she gave me a big old slam upside the head, and I thought... I knew better than that. She, yeah. she wakes up like just her like, dad. Yeah, just like you. <laughs> We've seen you wake up like that. Uh, I tell you, so speaking of them, let's go. Uh, Mike's got a clip. You've not seen all this oh, yet. Oh, boy. Um, remember when we went hat shopping during CMA Fest? <laughs> <laughs> I it remember was, when you went hat well, shopping. Well, yeah. So <laughs> we uh, just, and this was a great, one of the times, first time I got to hang out with both of them together and just. Yeah, uh, this was fun. This was fun, and this is just a glimpse into it. <laughs> to our life as buddies and uh we'll let that that Scott load up and Brandon play had one almost identical to that it was one of those i think uh, i need this for the show i'm bolo telling you that's sharp man bolo <laughs> so show me how this hat thing works i'm gonna be honest with you travis you're gonna have a hard time finding the hat and i ain't choking you <laughs> does it tell you what size i mean it's what size it is like yeah when, seven and five right, eights that's not this is what we need neither will an eight be big enough no. Yeah, I, I, I can't know, even. I know no, that. and I don't even know. It's not gonna fit. You need something that comes down <laughs> here and gets pretty close to your ears. You don't mm -hmm. want it right on. I mean, because right. your ears you turn out a little bit. Yeah. But you want it to be down there, and and that's just not wide enough to go on down on your head. Right. I found a hat for you. you did? Yeah, she found a hat. She found a hat for me. I, did. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's so wrong, <laughs> my daughter. Oh, wrong <laughs> Hey, hey, it almost <laughs> Look fits. At this. Did she already asked you what the largest Absolutely. hat you had in the house was? Yeah, no. yeah I love no, the you fact gotta get that you're with okay you with that. Listen to you back there. Right. Ready? Oh, Look. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. Look, oh he's got, not going to have enough attention. You see what Savannah it's picked out for me? Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So pull that, pull that back just a little bit. Because the first time, the first time I got distracted w watching me and Savannah, <laughs> and then Worley forgets he's got his mic on. <laughs> Could you hear y'all's conversation? Oh, that's a big old head. I don't know if we got anything. No, I ain't got nothing. Look, absolutely. No, you got to get in the picture. <laughs> that's what I thought. Y'all, we are in. Says, that is a big head. <laughs> yeah, that is a big head. And so here we are in downtown so Nashville good. and can't find a hat that'll fit my head. I know one thing. I wound up buying. Uh, 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 when I saw those <laughs> boots, my wife and my daughter both had had been looking at boots, and they recognized mm -hmm. those boots. But when I first saw them, I thought, ah, that's just some of these what you would call it, you know. Yeah. Buy 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 one get a, another pair of free boots, but it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. <yeah. laughs> no, those were some high dollar boots. So yeah, y'all take me shopping. It's supposed to be part of the show, and I wind up. Yep. I got some boots. You got some boots. My daughter got some boots. Yeah. She loves them. She wore them in the video. So I'll tell you, so so you've talked about the flag. You'll see a lot of the stuff. We've even got one on today. Um, you know, I've brought some of my stuff. I'm a huge Titans fan. I'm all things all things football. Um, love high school football, Henry County Patriots. That's something we'll have to get. Yeah, you know, I know Hardin County and all that stuff. That's that's okay football, but we play five A football up here and Y'all can come come see some of that on a Friday night. And then, uh, of course, Tennessee Vols. You like the Vols, too, don't mm -hmm. you? You watch yep. Tennessee I'm a volunteer. Football? Yes, sir. Make sure. I, I didn't think you were a Bama fan. That would have been no. bad for our relationship. No, so. I'm real close to the Alabama state line where we live. You right. Know, like the way if you threw a rock or the way the crows fly. But I got friends that live on this side of the line that root for Alabama. And I'm like, okay, there's a – there's a line there for a reason. Right. You live in Tennessee. You live in Tennessee. And I mean, whatever that is. And I would I would put good money that says in the next five years, they're going to convert back to Tennessee fans. I bet they jump ship during the whole do, Nick Saban thing. If they do, they'll hear from they're me. They're going to hear from you. Oh, because, man, I stuck. I mean, I. you know what? You got your Titans. And mm -hmm. I, I was at four years old, I sit in my daddy's lap and watch Green Bay Packers because – he was a huge Vince Lombardi fan, and I grew to, to love that football tradition. And, and so my whole life, I was a Green Bay Packers fan. Yeah. 
when the Titans came to Nashville, you know, I, w- I was, according to everybody else, I'm just supposed to switch now. And I said, oh, you're out of your no, mind. No. What's that about? Right. We didn't even have a football team. And, I, I, of course, I pick on them and say, that's that's the Houston Oilers. You can't spell oh, it with a T. But see. anyway, yeah, we know what's going on. And, and so, yeah, you got to – my grandpa said you got to dance with the one that brung you. That's true. <laughs> that's true. And I tell you, my generation is so fortunate. You know, I grew up. <laughs> at the the peak of fantasy football. Oh yeah. And so I love watching the Green Bay Packers, you know, because sure. you you've, you know, I don't know how many times I had Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams yeah. on my fantasy team. Well, you was all right then. And so I, you're, you know, <laughs> you you pick those two boys, you were set. That's right. Um and so pretty much anybody but the Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, even the Colts post Manning. I'm I'm a, you know, diehard Manning fan, right. so but since then they those two teams are pretty much at the bottom of my list. Uh, but everybody else, I can sit around and watch them. Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't watch professional football anymore. I uh, I went through a really weird phase with that whole kneeling for the. It just it just didn't set well with me at all. If you want to yeah. know the truth, that was, and not to get into stuff that we should or shouldn't talk about, but but that's just one of my things. And so, I. It's weird, man. I get around folks that are still just as big into the whole professional football thing, and I think, man, sometimes I think I really miss that. But but college takes care of me. Good. <laughs> I'm good. Good. <laughs> well, Mike, anything you want us to, to add from your side of this? Well, I know, uh, you know, We've heard we've heard about Daryl, and I know yeah. you you don't want to bring it up, Travis. But I, I know a lot of people are kind of wondering who I am or what yeah. am I doing? <laughs> Why is, yeah. who's this who's yeah. this big fat oh, guy on the set? About about, about yeah. you, you know what what brought you guys together? Who 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 are you? So let, let me let me set that up. Okay. Yeah. So we we spent all this time talking about me, but but we hadn't let the people <laughs> get a feel for why you're here and, and what your role is and how I know you and who you are and all that, it, the list goes on and on and on. But so if you don't mind, I'll, I'll let you mm-hmm. give them a little background on how you and I uh, came to know one another and, and, and how much uh, it means to me that you're, you're here. <laughs> it was certainly more your idea than it was mine. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll let you uh, take a moment and or as many moments as you want. Yeah. And, Tell us, tell us a little tell bit a little about bit. that. Little so, so our relationship kind of kicked off. Um, you know, if there's anything positive that came from COVID, <laughs> I think our relationship was one of them because we were able to utilize some some grant money to do an outdoor <laughs> event. Um, and so I had had you know knew who you were, thought it would be man that'd be cool to have a West Tennessee boy out, and I you know I kind of knew where you stood politically and some of those kinds of things. So I thought, man, if anybody's going to get out and play during this, I, I <laughs> I've got to figure out how to get a hold of this guy. And so, uh, amen. Called and said, hey, we you know got a wild request. Uh, we want you to come play on the courthouse steps. Um, and 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 just let me know what it's going to cost, but I've got a I've got an interesting caveat to it, <laughs> and I'm thinking I've I've never asked for this, but I had a sponsor who said, "Hey, I'll pay it, I'll pay to help make this happen and, and match the grant money or whatever we had to do, uh, if I can take him hunting." Yeah, and and <laughs> so that's the first time I met Julianne on the phone, and she goes, "Well." I mean, I can't see Daryl turning down hunting in November. So, uh, <laughs> and, and there, it, there it took off. Yeah. And so we had a blast and then we, we brought you back to Paris for the Tennessee river jam. Uh, yep. and one of the cool things that I think really hit just from not, not just an event promotion perspective, but, um, we did that, that interview on the back of your truck, oh, um, yeah. for PBS and Mike's pulling that up now. Um, <laughs> and it just, Man, we got to know each other. Yeah. And so just we really I think that day we realized, hey, there's more to yeah. this. There's 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 it's about a lot. chemistry, man. It really is. And so um it's just been neat to see this thing grow and develop and and then, you know, here we are and we're doing a podcast. Yeah, and it seems really natural. It does. Even when we're you know, working with other people that we've invited on the set, it's yeah. very natural. We all, we almost didn't have to create our, uh, you know, good, by, good cop, bad cop, whatever the, the right. thing, whatever's going on. We, we just 
we know what to do and that's yeah. pretty cool it is yeah. it is and so just excited about that and and you know we'll we'll get to know we, we want people to get to know us and and get to see the different sides of us and you know i've got we talked about savannah i've got the two girls and then gavin is my 11 year old uh he's a pretty cool there's a picture of him right there that's fourth <laughs> of july this year uh he's my little pyro it. and <laughs> so he and and ollie this was ollie's first year to get to help with the big fireworks um scroll down what do you have there <laughs> so <laughs> let me guess <laughs> that's when i was little uh that's check that check that rat tail there man i, I was see sport, it i was sporting the rat tail i see it uh can't hide the Gosh, can't hide those man. ears <laughs> now that's a cool uh graphic right there so i got to perf- i've performed twice at carnegie hall that's one of my fun facts I can normally throw out. Um, what were y'all doing? So that was the the Bethel University Singers ah. uh, debuted a piece of music. So they they took us through a semester, um, and we got to debut That's a piece cool. of music and do some work there. And then uh, I got to sing in the National Children's Choir in two thousand and two, uh, which was a really interesting time to be in New York and do all of that as a middle school kid. Yeah, man. Um, and and of course Carnegie Hall is just I mean, it's that's about as cool as it gets. Yes, sir. Oh, and that's probably one of my favorite photos. That's my wife, Jessica. That's the day Millie was born. Look at that dark hair. Yeah, and that's Bubba and Sissy getting to meet, <laughs> getting to meet Millie. Of course, got to pull in a Titans photo. That's Gavin, Gavin watching my <laughs> football. You can tell it's a little intense. Yeah. That's my dad, Terry McLeese, there in that yeah, photo. That's a and good so, face on that uh, boy. <laughs> oh man, gotta have me in a suit and tie. Where'd you get some of these, Mike Murphy? <laughs> Facebook is powerful. So we're introducing. Facebook is powerful. Uh, that's amazing. Oh, that's cool. That's good stuff. Man. I hadn't seen some of these in a while. There you go. So, so part of my other side of this, I went to Bethel University. Um, that was the there's, first night that uh, me and Travis went out and hung out together. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bar fight if I've ever seen one. Uh, Mike actually directed that yeah, play cute. called Funny Money. And I went through about an hour of makeup for about 10 minutes on stage. Wow. Uh, but it was it was a blast. They busted a vase over my face. All of that's makeup. None of that's real. Uh, there's Mike and I in Godspell. Uh, when we were in college, we How took that cool. show on the road. That was pretty neat. And then I always love playing quirky people, and that was uh, that was an activity where we created an entire show in 24 hours. Wow! So it was an exercise where you come in, you're with a group of people in the program. They give you a theme, and they say in 24 hours you have an audience. Go! Uh, and so that's pretty slick. That's so neat. just some fun stuff there, and. Um, just kind of like you said, talk about life. That's that's kind of my my background, my story, and uh, some of the things that we have fun with. So, well, I'm sure glad that we uh, our paths crossed. I don't believe in coincidence when it comes to stuff like that, and I think this is going to be a ton of fun, and and we'll have a a, a whole. It, it's going to be diverse too. That's I've already realized that we're going to do. You know, just in our conversations today, we've talked about a lot of different stuff and we'll have elements of that that'll run through this continuously every time yeah and we'll bring in a lot of other people that'll have uh you know more input in those areas that can clarify things and 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 i think it's going to be the thing that i get from it the most even the tr- little promo is i said this is going to be entertaining for people it is it's i be really fun. do believe that, it is so it here is here we go and again you'll see we'll put on on uh, the screen, probably as I'm talking, hopefully cover my face for a few minutes um, to show you all the places where you can find this podcast. Uh, we'll tie in some different clips and some different media, and there's just there's no telling where this thing's going to go. So <laughs> I think sure. we're we're getting kind of the ready to wrap this first episode. Um, t- poof, it's gone, isn't it? Man, that just like that didn't take didn't take much, did it? Pretty easy, yeah. And don't don't forget, we're going to have a lot of opportunities for audience interaction as well. We'll put some things up on socials. We'll have that uh, that voicemail line. Yeah, Uh, we haven't pushed it, you know, in in between, but we'll push that, uh, and you you'll get to be on the episode if if we pick your voicemail. So uh, uh, you know, call into that. We'll put it up. We'll put it in the description, uh, and uh, um, you know, a question. Uh, for either one of these guys or a topic you want them to talk about, uh, anything like that, make sure to do that too. Thanks for reminding us that, Mike. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a wrap. Uh, I guess we'll Hey, how did you get to say that? Huh? 
Is, did I, I'm not, am I not supposed no, to say I was, that? I was, I was, it's, I was teeing it up. So that's a wrap. Oh, what uh, I was, I see how I was volleying uh, that up for you. I'm not sure about that. Is not, it a wrap? The music says it is. <laughs> I don't know where y'all got this music, but I like it. <laughs> Sounds Like Life with Daryl Worley is a Blue Spire Media production hosted by Daryl Worley and Travis McLeese, produced and edited by Mike Murphy and Sam Hudson, lighting by Michael Powell, set design by Sam Hudson, theme song Sounds Like Life to Me by Daryl Worley, executive producers Jeff Lemonowski and Julianne Drennan.